This drone here may be my new favorite daily flyer. It's a three and a half inch freestyle drone with the Walksnail Avatar video system. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build it. Then we're gonna go out and test fly it. If you're not interested in the build portion of the video, skip to this timestamp here. If you wanna see the build and the flight, stick around, we're gonna get into it here. Okay, so here we have all the parts for the build we're doing, plus some extras. So we're gonna go through all this real quick and then we'll get started with the build. So starting off here, we have our frame. Uh, the frame I picked is a uh, Flyfish Volador VX 3.5. So this is a three and a half inch frame. I really like what they've done here with this frame. They have all these individual bags and they're all specifically labeled with uh, what's inside. So each screw, the number of screws, what it's for, left, right, standoff, if it's for the O3, whatever. Came with two straps, very nice. And it came with two different battery pads. And then of course it came with some 3D prints. This is nice if you want to mount a GoPro, uh, but it's good that it comes with these as far as mounting antennas and things. So that's always nice to see. This is their tropical mix colors on here. So this is gonna look really good. Next up here, we have our main board, our flight controller. So for this build, since it is a three and a half inch, I figured I could get away with an all-in-one, which will save weight and space in this small frame. So this is the GEP RC F722 35 amp all-in-one V2. So it's an all-in-one flight controller and ESC, uh, F7 processor. So of course we're gonna have plenty of UARTs if we did wanna add a GPS or any other types of stuff like that in the future. Uh, I think it'll work out well. 35 amps is uh, more than enough for what we're gonna be running. It does come with a capacitor and an XT30 for your uh, battery connection, which is nice. And it comes with a cable, a four wire cable for a uh, video system. Next up, we have our motors here. Um, these are again, Flyfish RC. Uh, I think these are recommended for this frame and they look good. This is an 1804 3500 KV. So these, are a little bigger than maybe you'd want to go depending on the weight you're trying to get on this drone if you're trying to do a sub 250 a lot of people go with a 1404 but for me i wanted to have you know that extra power so i went with the 1804 uh, i think these will work out really good and i do like the way they look i think they're a nice looking motor and for our receiver we have this happy model uh, EP1. It is a diversity receiver and it is a true diversity receiver, meaning it has two separate RF chipsets instead of just antenna switching. And like I said, we are switching video systems. So here we have the Walk Snail Avatar Kit. Um, I went with the Avatar HD Pro Kit. Now the standard one I think does better in uh, daylight. It probably has a little bit better of an image but we'll see because I haven't flown this. I haven't seen it yet. I don't, I don't know what it looks like, but I went with the pro kit because winter's coming up and I do plan on doing a lot of night flying and it's nice to have uh, high quality visibility at night. You know, with analog, pretty much all analog cameras do good in really low light situations. You know, just having a little bit of street lamp light and whatnot, they do really well. So this pro kit is supposed to do good at night. So that's why I bought this pro kit. Here's what it looks like, very nice camera, uh, VTX, and it comes with an antenna. So this will work out well. I'm very excited to see what Walksnail has to offer. And of course, we can't fly Walksnail Avatar without some Walksnail or Fat Shark goggles. So what we have here are the Fat Shark Dominator HD. I am really excited for these goggles because of how small they are. Let's back this out. Because of how small they are and, and the, the form factor, these things are absolutely tiny in a good way. And um, compared to the DJI goggles V2, these things are amazing. They're really small and I think they will do really well for a more compact setup. Uh, and I'm excited for the OLED screens. Um, I'm not sure how well these will do with range and pen penetration compared to DJI. I've watched a lot of videos and it seems like they're not as good, but we will do our testing 
and we'll see how they do. Uh, nowadays, the firmware from, from most of the videos I watched were about a year old, so now there's multiple firmware versions out. Uh, so I think we'll be in a better spot now than when they first got released. So, but very excited for these goggles. The main reason I'm switching to walk snail for all this stuff is that the DJI video transmitter for just the video transmitter, it's like $250 out after taxes for just the video transmitter. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's, that's as much as an entire drone. So that's why I decided to try these out. And for my future builds, you know, if you're doing long range and that type of stuff, then I would say DJI is the way to go. Or if you need that high penetration DJI again, but for your typical freestyle stuff, you, you, there's other options out there that are much cheaper. So that's why I wanted to try these out. So I'm very excited to see this. So we're gonna get our frame set up first, get this thing uh, mostly together, at least the bottom end so that we can start to mount our all in one board and our motors and all that stuff. This is kind of a cool piece that they threw on here. It's just cool branding that I think is cool. So it goes in the plate like that. I think it's kind of cool. This is our bottom plate and this is the front end of the drone. This is our mid plate and this will be the back end of the drone. And the arms get squished between the two pieces. All the arms are the exact same size, length, all that. So you don't have to worry about anything there. So the bottom plate, like I said, is the shorter one. Um, the mid plate is the one with the press nuts in it. You'll see there's, there's nuts pressed into it. And now that's where this piece comes in. This, uh, this small little guy here goes in the center there. Okay, so here we have the uh, bottom part of the frame put together. Uh, it was kind of finicky to get these bottom screws. Now that it is tightened down, I mean, the arms are absolutely solid. It is a, it is a nice design. It's kind of hard to put together, but the arms are absolutely solid now. So I'm very happy with the way it looks, the way it feels. That's looking good. So the next thing we're gonna do is get our um, stack mounted or our all-in-one. We're gonna get this mounted so we can kind of uh, map things out these long screws that came with the kit are the stack mounting screws. Now this is a 25 by 25. So if we look, we have two different um, sets of holes here. We've got these ones that are threaded here and then these ones here that are not threaded. And these ones that are not threaded are a 25 by 25. They also are recessed on the bottom. So that's how that looks. Flip it over. So here's where you really gotta pay attention to kind of what you wanna do. You've got your USB connection here for plugging in to Betaflight to configure, do all that stuff. You don't necessarily wanna have that facing straight backwards or straight forwards because you're not gonna be able to easily plug your USB connection and you're really gonna want that facing out either side so that you can easily plug in. But you have to think about where are the rest of your connections? So. Motor connections are okay. You know, you can always kind of string those around wherever the motor wires are nice and long, but the XT60 or XT30 lead, your battery lead, is those two big pads right there. And so you're gonna, you, you know, you wanna think about, okay, so how am I gonna mount that? So we've got the all-in-one mounted and we've got our uh, USB on the side here. So I have easy access for beta flight, tuning, whatever we need to do, that's good. Uh, now our battery pads, positive, negative sitting here, we can have our XT30 kind of coming out the side, the front here, and these are coming out here. That'll work out good and be able to plug in, no issues there. That will also leave us room up front here to mount our capacitor. Even with the camera in there, we've still got room, plenty of room, even if the camera's backed up a bit, we've still got plenty of room to mount the capacitor. This walk snail video transmitter need two to six S voltage. So you can't, you cannot run this off of a five volt pad, which we have plenty of, but we don't actually have a VBAT pad on here. On this flight controller, and if you look at the diagram, if you look back there, you'll see this, uh, this plug here is for an O3 air unit or walk snail or whatever digital system. So that, that plug right there will give us VBAT, so battery power, which will be 4S voltage, which is fine, because again, six to two S, or two to six S, I should say. So that plug right there will give us battery voltage, ground, and UART2, so T2 and R2 are all on that plug. So we also have a plug on the VTX. The only problem is that this one goes into the board and fits, 
and this one goes into the VTX and fits, but both ends are just blank ends with um, pre-tinned solder. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually just trim these down and solder these together so that it's one cable with a plug on each end. That way I don't have to solder on the board or the VTX and it's just a cleaner look. So real quick, I'm gonna make the plug that goes between the flight controller and the um, video transmitter. Again, you wanna pay attention to uh, what's going where. Out of the board, we're gonna have red and black coming out of the board, which is uh, battery ground. Our yellow wire is our TX, our white wire is our RX. And of course, you always want R to T, T to R. You don't wanna go R to R and T to T because R and T is transmit and receive. So you don't wanna transmit going to a transmit. They're both yelling at each other. No one's listening. Same thing with receiver. R to R would be both listening. No one's talking. So transmit to receive, yelling to listening, uh, both sides. So yeah, here is the plug. I've just got some heat shrink on there. And yeah, you can see it plugs in right there. And then our video transmitter. Video transmitter will sit in the back, wires come out, and they'll kind of wrap around and plug right into the video transmitter there. So that will work out very well. So now we've got our special little plug. Wasn't too hard to make, just solder it together. Heat shrink, good to go. Next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take our XT30 lead and our capacitor, and we're gonna get those mounted up on there, and then we'll do the motors. Um, we do have our XC30 already tinned, so that's good. We just need to tin these pads down here. We got our negative here. And then suddenly you have a machine that can fly and be touched by people and go through people. And that's why good. I opened up like, this whole genre of the that's now like, called. We can get this thing to focus. Yeah. Positives on, looks good. Minimum, so that I can fit onto a small little plug factor like this. I mean, look at this guy. You can pretty much apply this to anything. So All right. It looks really good. I like it. Um, now, Let's get our capacitor on there. So what we've got here is the capacitor is uh, just soldered on there and then I kind of flipped it over and faced it down. So it's got some electrical tape on it so that it will actually not touch the frame and short out or anything. But you can kind of see you know, how it's mounted. It's just kind of looped over and it'll sit there. Plenty of room for the camera still, so that's all good. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to get our motors on. So now what we're gonna do is probably tin all the motor pads first, then we're gonna mount the motors up and measure and cut the wires. We'll tin those and we'll get the motors all soldered on. These pads are extra small, so that's kinda, you know, interesting. There we go, we got one of them right there. Like I said, the motor pads are really tiny. So these are your motor pads right there. They're really small, but then again, the motor wires are really small, so it'll be fine. So it did come with motor screws. I'm not sure uh, if they are the right lengths. We'll see. I do have some extras in case these are too long. The screws that come with the uh, motors are almost never the ones I use. They're either way too long or way too short. Thankfully, I have these kits of M2 and M3 hardware. Got these off of Amazon. They were great. And I would think it goes without saying, when you do mount your motors, you obviously want the wires to run along the arm and you don't want the wires coming out this way or any other way. They need to be facing towards the arm. So now, um, the way this is gonna work because of where the motor pads are, we have motor pads here, motor pads here, here, and here. So these two back ones are gonna go here and here. They're gonna go to those two in this corner and the front two are gonna go to those front corners. So yeah, I'm gonna run the motor wires, you know, flat on the arm like that. So basically like that, that's where they're gonna run to. 
when it comes to cutting your motor wires to length, always, always make sure you have some slack and a good amount of slack. I'm gonna get all these cut and then we'll get them soldered up. Okay, so at this point we have our motor wires cut to the length. Okay, so now we got all the motor wires uh, cut to length. They're all tinned, the pads are all tinned. Now we can solder the motors on. Okay, all the motors are soldered on. Everything looks really good. Um, next thing I'm probably gonna do is tape the motor wires down, secure those so they're nice and clean and out of the way. All right, so here's what we got. All the motor wires are taped up. So the next thing we gotta do here is get the receiver hooked up. So we gotta tin the pads on here, tin the pads on the receiver, and wire that up. Got some antennas, some heat shrink, and the receiver itself. The only thing that's interesting is the fact that it did not come with wires. Thankfully, you know, I have a, I have a few extra <laughs> extra wires. So as you can see on the back side there, we got all those pads tinned ready to go. Okay, and that thing's ready to go. It's tinned. All right, so here's where we're at. Uh, I decided to put all the standoffs on uh, the, rear, uh, the rear TPU piece for the antennas. So we're ready to go on that, just so I can get a better look at kind of where things are gonna sit. I think I am gonna soft mount this. Um, so I have some 3M double-sided sticky tape here, and we're just gonna stick that down. I do wanna get this plug into the flight controller though. Okay, that's plugged in. So that's ready to go uh, for the video transmitter. We do also have some silicone vibration dampeners for 19 millimeter camera. It also came with some ones specifically for the O3 because I think the O3 might be 20 millimeter. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, two different colors, white and black. So here is where we are at, guys. Uh, I've got the video transmitter mounted, the camera mounted. I've got the 3D print on the back for the antennas. Uh, we've got our plug that's going from our video transmitter to our all-in-one. I did decide to just uh, use some 3M tape to stick down the video transmitter. You can see there, it's just mounted with some 3M tape. It works fine, it's not going anywhere, it's, it's solid. And then the camera's mounted up with those, um, those soft mounts. The camera might be upside down. I think I messed up. So the camera's probably upside down. I don't know if I can change that in the settings and rotate the image. If not, I guess I'm screwed and I'll have to take it back out but you guys don't have to worry about that. So here's where we're looking right now. So now I'm gonna get the uh, receiver soldered up. And next to the five volt is R2. Next is ground. And now, T2. Probably won't be able to see very well on here, but they're all soldered to their pads. Now we gotta solder it to the receiver here. There we go, receiver's all soldered up. All right, that looks good. All right, so we got the heat shrink on there when we're ready. And I think what we're gonna do with this is we are actually going to mount the receiver to the top of the video transmitter. We're gonna use some more of this 3M just cause this is the easiest way for me to do this. Um, after we get the antennas down on, we'll heat shrink it and we'll just stick it to the top of that and run our antennas, so. That's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, capacitor we already had mounted, so now it's just kind of stuffed down uh, behind the camera. That'll work good. We got this 3D print on the back here that is gonna hold our rear antenna. We got some zip ties up front to hold our front antenna. This receiver we got wired up. 
and I just used some more double-sided sticky tape and stuck it to the top of the VTX, so I think that'll work fine for me. And then, yeah, we got the plug here running from our video transmitter to our all-in-one board, so it's plugged in on both ends. And then that way also our bind button is out on the outside here. Also, you're gonna use this when you update firmware. And then the other side, you have uh, this plug here, which you're gonna use to also to put the firmware onto the board. If you record on the, uh, on the VTX internally, that's how you get the footage off. It comes with a plug that plugs into there. The antenna right here for the VTX is kinda snaked around. Um, and then you can see the uh, the plate here, it holds down the UFL connector right there. So that um, unscrews, there's a screw on the end here and one over here. And then that unscrews and you can click your antenna on and that'll hold it down in place. Really, I guess we're, we're done here. We can put the top plate on and power this thing up for the first time and see how it does. Actually, I'm gonna leave the top plate off and then we're gonna power it on. So first plug in here, let's, let's see what happens. Got a smoke stopper. Um, this is always a good idea in case something's wrong. Hopefully not, but I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna be using these for my flight packs. These are 850 milliamp hour 4S. I got these three of these for pretty cheap on Amazon, so these will work well. All right, here we go. Well, no smoke. We got tones, no smoke, board lights up, VTX is lighting up, receivers lighting up. I think we're looking good. All right, so now at this point, I need to get this thing into the computer and get it all configured and tuned and make sure everything's right and my OSD and you know, you know the whole thing. Um, I'm not gonna show any of that because uh, you know there's there's plenty of videos out there showing you guys how to do all that stuff. Uh, specifically, uh, Joshua Bardwell's got an, an endless amount of videos on Betaflight configuration, uh, anything to do with Betaflight, he's got you covered, and building-wise too. So yeah, if you if you need help with that stuff, I would send you over to Joshua Bardwell's channel, and he will be able to help you out. So yeah, I'm gonna get this all done up in the computer, bound, everything like that and then uh, we are gonna go fly this thing. We're gonna go do a flight test of different modes, see the penetration range, how the image quality is. For those of you who stuck around here, we are to do the flight testing of this new system and this new drone. So here is uh, the finished product. Um, I think it looks pretty good. So this is actually not the first time I've flown this. I have probably maybe 10 flights on this off camera that I did because uh, a little bit of tuning stuff that I wanted to get done and I wanted to test all the modes, that way I could eliminate ones that I just don't care about or I'm not gonna fly. So there's a few different options when it comes to the Walksnail video system. High frame rate, standard frame rate, so that's 120 frames and 60 frames. Now the 120 frames is only available in 720p. Then there's 1080, 60 frames. And then there's the megabit per second mode, which is 25 megabits per second and 50 megabits per second. So of course the 50 megabits per second is gonna give you technically a cleaner image or a sharper image. You have more megabits, more pixels to work with. Um, so I've tested all these different modes. I did a little bit of a range test. We went out about a half a mile, roughly 2,500 feet, and it did pretty good. Now for my goggles, I am just running uh, stubby antennas. We got these two bottom ones are the Walksnail Redbird and these two top ones are True RC. This is a GMB battery specifically made for goggles. It comes with an XT60, a balance plug so you can charge it through the XT60, and a barrel plug you can plug directly into your goggles if you want to strap this to the, to the head strap, and a little battery indicator that lights up. So I'm going to be recording both with the goggles DVR and internally on the VTX. Now the VTX is going to be recording 18060 throughout all the tests, but the goggles, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. So we're going to start out with 720p, standard frame rate, standard bit rate. I'm not gonna mess with the high frame rate because it's not available in 1080. And to me so far from what I've seen, it doesn't make a big difference. All the tests are gonna be at 1200 milliwatts, so max output power. And I'm gonna let you guys decide if there's a difference, how much difference there is. Me personally, I think there is a difference between 720 and 1080 in the standard bit rates. But once you do 720, 50 megabits, it looks about the same as the 1080, 25 megabits, and roughly about the same as the 1080, 50 megabits, but again, I'm gonna let you guys decide. So for the first test again, 720, standard bit rate, 1200 milliwatts, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna try to uh, fly roughly the same flight path, so that way you guys can uh, compare, and maybe I could do a side-by-side -side if you want. Okay, so 
I have a bit of a problem here. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have any clips in 720, any DVR footage from 720, either 25 megabits or 50 megabits, because there's a little bit of a problem with the SD card. What you're looking at right now is actually the 108060 recorded off the VTX. So this is, you know, basically the best image you would get recording directly from the VTX. Um, so with the SD card, if I put it in the goggles and format the card in the goggles, when I put it in my computer, it will not read the card for some reason. Um, I'm using an Apple computer. Maybe it's different with Windows. I don't know. But what I have to do is take the card and format it with my GoPro, then put it into the goggles and not format it. Then it will write to the card fine, and then the computer will, will read the card and I can take the files off. Uh, I had another issue, though, where after I format it with the GoPro and put it in the goggles, for some reason the first time I record to the card or the first time that files are written to the card, those ones are like corrupted or something. So basically I lost the first clip of me testing the 720 modes. Uh, I now know that I need to hit the record button, have it write to the card for a couple seconds, stop and re-record, and then all the footage after that is all good to go. I know it's a little confusing, but... So all the footage you're gonna see is actually 1080 and 25 and 1080 and 50 megabits, but like I'll say in the video multiple times, I really don't see a point in the 720 modes. 1080, 25 is gonna give you better range and penetration, I think, and it looks great, and 1080, 50 is gonna give you the best image quality overall. Uh, I just wouldn't mess with the 720 modes. 1080 is gonna be perfect for pretty much everybody, uh, but I wanted to let you guys know real quick. Okay, now here's 1080 standard bitrate. A little bit of smearing on the ground is pretty normal with all these modes. Again, we can see the megabits there. Staying pretty steady on that 25 megabit mode. This is kind of going behind me here and behind my truck. A little bit of uh, smearing on the ground, no big deal. Part of that is because I am behind me. All right, now we're looking at 1080, 50 megabits. This is gonna be your highest resolution. Best looking image, but probably highest latency. And I don't think it does as good on the bit rate. No, actually it's holding in there pretty good. And again, this is all with focus mode off. So I'll show you how focus mode looks when we're done here with this. So far, I haven't seen any stutters or anything funky, so it's all looking good. And we haven't gone too far away, but we're definitely that building over there. Um, you know, it's got to push through that two brick walls. Um, and I haven't been paying attention the whole time to the megabit, so, but like I said, you guys will be able to see that in uh, the video. A little bit of smearing there on the ground, because we're behind me. But for the most part, it's looking pretty good. Now this thing's flying good. All right, voltage is coming down, so we gotta come in here for a landing. Okay, so for our next test here, we're gonna do a little bit of a range test, nothing too far, and a penetration test. Uh, me personally, from what I've seen, 720 at 25 megabits is okay, it's still HD, but if I'm flying 720, I'd probably switch to the 50 megabits mode. Uh, 1080 
and 25 megabits is pretty good and, and in my experience so far it does better at range so if you're gonna be flying a little bit further uh, or you need more penetration I think 1080 25 megabits is gonna be a good mode to fly in now if you're not doing too much uh, distance or you, you don't need a whole lot of penetration you're just flying freestyle I would say running the 1080 50 megabits is the way to go uh, the image looks great and um, yeah, that's just in my experience. And I did do another test where I sat inside of my truck. I wanted to see how well the signal penetrated outside of the truck at distances. So I did do a test sitting in my truck uh, in both 1080-25 and 1080-50 uh, megabits, and it did great. I got plenty of range. I, I, I probably went maybe a thousand feet away distance-wise, and I went to the legal limit of 400 feet above me, and it did great the whole time. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a great system so far. I'm really excited, really happy with the results because a lot of the videos I watched, people were complaining about range and penetration and things and it was, had me a little worried, but so far it's been great. So um, I'm gonna turn you around here, let's do this. So over there you can see the building I was flying behind. It's you know, a decent ways away, I'm over here. So I was flying behind that building over there. So for our range test, we're gonna fly right out to the tree line, the tall trees right there. Um, I'll put up on screen how far away that is from me so you guys can see. Uh, so that's going to be our range test. And then for penetration, I'm just going to fly behind this building and see how far back I can go before things start to get really bad. And now in my testing, like I said, I've done a lot of testing, 720, 25 megabits and 50 megabits versus 1080, 25 and 50 megabits. And in my opinion, of all the testing I've done in range and penetration, I think you realistically could just stick with 1080 and if you want more clarity, if you're not doing you know, too much, go to your 50 megabit mode, it's gonna work great. If you want a little more range and penetration, I think the 25 megabit is where you wanna be. On top of that, when you look in there at 25 megabits, when you choose your channel, you have channels one through eight, eight being the public channel, don't fly on that, but you have uh, your full channel selection. When you go to tw uh, 50 megabits, you only have three or four channels to, to select from, I can't remember but you have a limited channel selection because the 50 megabits takes up more bandwidth, I believe is why. So again, too, if you're flying with other people, either analog or digital systems, if you're flying 50 megabits, you're taking up more bandwidth. So that's another thing to consider when it comes to the bit rates. 25 megabits is gonna leave you plenty of room to have you know, maybe three, four pilots in the air, whether it's digital or uh, analog. So for this first test, we're doing 1080 standard bit rate with focus mode off. We're gonna to fly to the tree line. We're gonna come back and fly around the back of the building like I showed you. Then we'll come back, we'll land, we'll switch to 1080, 50 megabits, do the same run. And then just so you guys can see what focus mode does, I'll put focus mode on. It doesn't matter if it's 25 or 50, you'll be able to see kind of what it does, what it looks like um, and how much it helps versus not having that. So I'm gonna, we're gonna get this test started here. It's looking good. Oh, we forgot to record. Channel one selected, all good, ready. So we can see 25 megabits, we're still looking good. No jitters, no stutters, no nothing. Oh, there's a bird right there. Everything's looking good. Oh, we had a little bit of uh, that, that smearing effect there. Okay, yep, everything's looking good. Now we're gonna fly behind the building. You can see me over there next to my truck. I fly behind the building here and see where or if we lose video. 25 megabits still. 22, 13, 12, ooh, it's really dropping. Seven, oh, we're getting red screen, we're getting red screen. Okay, that's, that's, uh, all right. Now we're gonna switch modes here. And then again, you're gonna have to go back and select the channel anytime you change one of these bit rates or I think resolution stays the same, but when you change bit rates, you gotta select a different channel. So see here, we only have three channels available. The public channel you don't wanna fly on. So back to channel one. Okay, and 
and we're on 50 megabits now. Let's try this again. Megabits is still looking solid. Jumping around a little, but it's not too bad. Yeah, it, it jumps around a little bit, but nothing too crazy. It stays pretty solid. Now, I think the latency is gonna be the highest on this. Ooh, we got some, some more uh, smearing there. I think the latency is gonna be higher on a 1080, 50 megabits mode versus the lower megabits and resolution, I believe. Okay, same test. We're gonna go behind the building here. See how quickly, oof, oof. Uh, roughly the same spot. It did seem to drop quicker, and I felt like I just didn't get as far. But, yeah, it looked about the same. All right, I'm gonna land now, and I'm gonna show you guys the uh, focus mode. Oh, that was a nice landing. Danger. All right, so I'll show you guys what the... Uh, Focus mode looks like. A little bit of freestyle. You can see all the jitters from my poorly tuned quad. Um, yeah, you'll see focus mode here in a second. There it is. That's focus mode. So it blurs the edges so that the, so that the, uh, it blurs the edges so that the center of the screen can stay clear and maybe it helps with your, uh, your megabits and, and uh, stuff like that, keeping your megabit rate higher. So that's gonna bother some people, having those blurred bars like that. Me personally, you're, you're... Oh, see, so we don't even need it here. We're still doing so good at this point. It turned on for a sec. So for me personally, you know, you're only ever looking at the center of the screen anyway. You're never looking far left or right, typically. So to me, it really doesn't bother me, but you know, you can turn that off and just have kind of that slight smearing, depending on how poor the uh, image is, you'll just have that smearing effect and you know, that's it. But um, I, yeah, I'm not sure how much it really helps, but I would imagine it, it does help with either keeping the megabits higher or maybe giving you a bit more uh, range and penetration. So that's up to you guys. Uh, when I did my longer range test, because I don't know how far this is. I think I, I put it on screen, but um, I don't know right now how far it is. But when I did my other range test at about 2,500 feet, about half a mile, I had focus mode on for all the flights uh, because I figured it would help. So I don't know how bad it would be once you get further out into uh, some of that stuff if you had it off. So you see it flash and turn on every once in a while. Again, you can turn that off if you don't, you know, like that or want it on. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> that was close. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you have any questions or anything you wanna say, leave it down in the comments. I will get back to you guys. Um, I'll have more videos in the future uh, with this system. And that's all I got today, but I'll see you guys in the next video.